Salmon is routinely one of Australia's most popular seafoods. However, the Tasmanian farmed salmon business has come under fire for its continuing expansion and purported environmental effect. Stick around to find out why salmon farming is a real issue and threat to our ecosystem, along with solutions and more sustainable options and an example of sustainable salmon farming. Stay tuned for all the important details. Sustainable alternatives to salmon farming and the current issue at hand. Richard Flanagan Again, the state's most famous novelist and a slew of scientists and environmentalists are pitted against a business and government they claim is jeopardizing the state's most valuable asset, its pristine natural environment. Salmon is consistently one of the most popular types of seafood in Australia, but the Tasmanian farm salmon industry has come under fire for its continuing expansion and potential environmental impact. Now, these issues aren't only taking place in Australia, but rather all over the globe, becoming a real environmental issue. According to a new evaluation of the worldwide salmon farming sector, salmon farming is wrecking havoc on marine ecosystems through pollution, parasites, and high fish death rates, inflicting billions of pounds in harm each year. According to a research released on Thursday, these costs totaled almost $50 billion globally between 2013 and 2019. In Scottish salmon farms alone, fish mortality has more than doubled, from 3% in 2002 to around 13.5% in 2019. Sea lice infestations are responsible for around a fifth of these deaths, but two-thirds are unaccounted for. So the true mortality from sea lice, which feed on salmon skin and mucus, practically eating the fish alive might be much higher. Scotland is one, if not the world's largest producers of farmed salmon, with the business contributing an estimated 2 billion euro to the Scottish economy each year. However, Just Economics, which conducted this study for the Changing Worlds Foundation's dead loss report estimated that the cost in terms of the environment alone would be 1.4 billion euro from 2013 to 2019. The huge volume of wild fish utilized in salmon farms is also becoming a source of worry. Fish meal and fish oil are made from around a fifth of the world's yearly wild fish harvest, which amounts to about 18 million tons per year, with about 70% of that going to fish farms. According to the paper, this is posing problems for fisheries in developing nations who are seeing their stocks destroyed in order to meet Western demand for farmed fish. Sardines, for example, are presently significantly overfished for this purpose in West Africa. And the situation is only going to worsen in the coming years as fish farmers seek significant expansion. According to the paper, salmon farmers may employ algal oils as a source of omega-3 for their farmed fish to substitute fish oil from wild fish, but few do so. Main issues regarding salmon fishing that is plaguing the globe. Pollution. Salmon pens produce a lot of waste, including feces and unconsumed feed. This could result in adverse water quality, such as high nutrients and low oxygen, for both farmed fish and the natural ecosystem. Although it's thought that nutrients emitted from salmon farms produce microalgal blooms, confirmation of this is missing due to a lack of studies. Disease. Secondly, disease thrives in densely packed pens, which is a prevalent concern on most salmon farms. Furthermore, disease transmissions from farmed salmon to wild populations have been recorded, with devastating consequences. Antibiotics are used to treat small ailments, however, there are concerns regarding antibiotic-resistant bacteria's consequences on human health. The development of vaccines to prevent certain diseases has been prioritized, reducing the demand for antibiotics. Aesthetics The aesthetics comes in third, and this reason is perhaps the most absurd. Salmon aquaculture facilities along residential shorelines have been criticized by certain landowners because they are unattractive and change the aesthetics of the area. Indeed, these issues have slowed aquaculture expansion in the United States significantly. More sustainable alternatives to salmon farming. Farmed fish convert feed to consumable food at about the same rate as poultry, making them a viable choice for increasing global animal protein supply. Aquaculture, like all other forms of food production, has environmental consequences. As aquaculture grew in popularity in the 1990s, several issues arose, including the clearing of mangroves in Asia and Latin America to make way for shrimp farms. The increased use of fish meal and fish oil derived from wild marine fish and the generation of water pollution as well as shrimp and fish diseases. For the last two decades, the aquaculture industry
3 has significantly improved its performance, producing more farmed fish per unit of water and land, lowering the amount of fish meal and fish oil in many aquaculture diets, and largely halting mangrove conversion. However, doubling aquaculture production without boosting efficiency could result in a doubling of environmental consequences. So, what are some ways to make salmon farming more sustainable? Shift incentives to rewards sustainability. Farmers can be enticed to conduct more sustainable aquaculture through a range of public and private programs. Thailand's government, for example, has provided free training, water, and wastewater treatment to shrimp farmers working legally in aquaculture zones. Small-scale farmers have also benefited from low-interest loans and tax breaks from the government, which have aided them in adopting new technology that has enhanced output while lowering the need to clear new land. Eat fish that are low on the food chain. If farm fish do not require substantial amounts of wild fish in their diets, fish farming can help to relieve pressure on marine ecosystems. Consumers should demand low trophic species like tilapia, catfish, carp, and bivalve mollusks, which eat at the bottom of the food chain. Even when billions of people join the global middle class in the future decades, the focus should remain on low trophic species in emerging nations where consumption of these species is still prevalent. At the same time, because fish is a major source of nourishment for more than a billion poor people in developing countries, expanding aquaculture to meet these consumers' foods and nutritional needs will be critical. Implement the latest information technology. Finally, fish farmers should really consider investing in the latest technology as this can dramatically increase sustainability of their farming. Global level monitoring and planning systems that promote sustainable fish farming and aquaculture development may now be viable thanks to advancements in satellite and mapping technologies, ecological modeling, open data, and connectivity. A platform that combines these technologies could aid governments in improving spatial planning and monitoring, industry in preparing for and demonstrating sustainability, and civil society in reporting success stories and holding industry and governmental accountable for wrongdoing. Example of a sustainable salmon farming alternative that is already in place. A big question that's plaguing the fish farming industry right now, how to make it more sustainable and eco-friendly. Well, here's an example that is doing just that. 200,000 Atlantic salmon are being carefully managed for next year's harvest in a small village near the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada. Lean, firm, their persimmon-colored flesh approved by a renowned Canadian chef for quality and taste. 2.5 million fish, 10,000 metric tons, are being farmed in saltwater enclosures for the same purpose. 2,000 miles south in a Miami suburb. Sustainable Blue in Nova Scotia and Atlantic Sapphire ASA in Florida are very different in size, but they both have the same goal. Both are on the approach of accomplishing something previously thought to be impossible, making a profit while raising premium Atlantic salmon that has never been exposed to the sea. Salmon farming on land has been a niche sector producing a very expensive product since it's expensive, technically demanding, and beset by its own environmental issues. However, proponents argue that it has the best chance of becoming a key food supply in the long run, not entirely sustainable, at least significantly more so than traditional marine-based farming. Astoundingly, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, human per capita fish consumption has more than doubled over the last 60 years, reaching 20.3 kilograms, 44.8 pounds in 2017, driven by changing dietary preferences and population growth. Even as the world's wild fish supply is diminishing, according to the group, almost 87% of the 179 million metric tons, 197 million tons, of fish generated through wild capture and farmed in 2018 ended up on our plates. And that share is expanding. So you can see how crucial it is that more sustainable methods are implemented soon. The removal of the fish from natural maritime habitats, which eliminates the chance of them passing on a variety of viruses and parasites, is a key ecological benefit of land-based salmon farming. The parasitic sea louse is wreaking havoc on salmon supplies around the world, resulting in massive losses for salmon growers and high prices for consumers. Sea lice are microscopic parasites the size of a fingernail that attach to the salmon's head and body. The salmon are fed by the lice, which finally kill them or render them unfit for human consumption. They can spread by tidal movements as well as escaping Atlantic salmon, infecting 
threatening a variety of fish species, including herring. This problem appears to be escalating, posing a threat to both farmers and the environment. And there you have it, everything you need to know about salmon farming and the issues it poses on our environment, along with sustainable alternatives that all fish farmers should be seriously considering. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss any of our new and upcoming content. See you in the next one.